Part One of the Suppliant Maidens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. The Suppliant Maidens by Aeschylus, translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Moorshead, eighteen forty nine to nineteen twelve. Part One. Dedication take thou this gift from out the grave of time the urns of greece lie shattered and the cup that for athenian lips the muses filled and flowery crowns that on athenian hair hid the cicala freedom's golden sign dust in the dust have fallen calmly sad the marble dead upon athenian tombs speak from their eyes farewell and well have fared they and the saddened friends whose hands last clasp winds from the solemn stone eternity yea well they fared unto the evening god passing beyond the limit of the world where face to face the son his mother saw a living man a shadow while she spake words that odysseus and homer heard i too o child i reached the common doom the grave the goal of fate and passed away such anticlea as thy voice to him across the dim gray gulf of death and time is that of greece a mother's to a child mother of each whose dreams are grave and fair who sees the naiad where the streams are bright and in the sunny ripple of the sea chimodiki with floating golden hair and in the whisper of the waving oak hears still the dryad's plaint and in the wind that sighs through moonlit woodlands knows the horn of artemis and silver shafts and bow therefore if still around this broken vase borne by rough hands unworthy of their load far from cephisus and the wandering rills there cling a fragrance as of things once sweet of honey from hymettus desert hill take thou the gift and hold it close and dear for gifts that die have living memories voices of unreturning days that breathe the spirit of a day that never dies argument io the daughter of inachus king of argos was beloved of zeus but hera was jealous of that love and by her ill will was io given over to frenzy and her body took the semblance of a heifer and argus a many-eyed herdsman was set by hera to watch io whithersoever she strayed yet in despite of argus did zeus draw nigh unto her in the shape of a bull and by the will of zeus and the craft of hermes was argos slain then io was driven over far lands and seas by her madness and came at length to the land of egypt there was she restored to herself by a touch of the hand of zeus and bare a child called epaphus and from epaphus sprang libya and from libya belus and from belus aegyptus and danaus and the sons of aegyptus willed to take the daughters of danaus in marriage but the maidens held such wedlock in horror and fled with their father over sea to argos and the king and citizens of argos gave them shelter and protection from their pursuers dramatis personae danaus the king of argos herald of aegyptus chorus of the daughters of danaus attendants scene a sacred precinct near the gates of argos statues and shrines of zeus and other deities stand around the suppliant maidens chorus zeus lord and guard of suppliant hands look down benign on us who crave thine aid whom winds and waters drove from where through drifting shifting sands pours nihilus to the wave from where the green land god possessed closes and fronts the syrian waste we flee as exiles yet unbanned by murder's sentence from our land but since aegyptus had decreed his son should wed his brother's seed ourselves we tore from bonds abhorred from wedlock not of heart but hand nor brook to call a kinsman lord and danaus our sire and guide the king of council pondering well the dice of fortune as they fell out of two griefs the kindlier chose and bade us fly with him beside heedless what winds or waves arose and o'er the wide sea waters haste 
until to argos shore at last our wandering pinnace came argos the immemorial home of her from whom we boast to come io the ox-horn maiden whom after long wandering woe and scathe zeus with a touch a mystic breath made mother of our name therefore of all the lands of earth on this most gladly step we forth and in our hands aloft we bear sole weapon for a suppliant's wear the olive shoot with wool enwound city and land and waters wan of inachus and gods most high and ye who deep beneath the ground bring vengeance weird on mortal man powers of the grave on you we cry and unto zeus the saviour guard of mortals holy and unstained receive ye us keep watch and ward above the suppliant maiden band chaste be the heart of this your land towards the weak but ere the throng the wanton swarm from egypt sprung leap forth upon the silted shore thrust back their swift road bark again repel them urge them to the main and there mid storm and lightning shine and scudding drift and thunders roar deep death be theirs in stormy brine before they foully grasp and win us maiden children of their kin and climb the couch by law denied and wrong each weak reluctant bride and now on her i call mine ancestress who far on egypt's shore a heifer's semblance wore a maiden once by hera's malice changed and then on him withal who as amid the flowers the grazing heifer ranged was in her by a breath of zeus conceived and as the hour of birth drew nigh by fate fulfilled unto the light he came in a paphos for name born from the touch of zeus the child received on him on him i cry and him for patron hold while in this grassy vale i stand where io roamed of old and here recounting all her toil and pain signs will i show to those who rule the land that i am child of hers and all shall understand hearing the doubtful tale of the dim past made plain and ere the end shall be each man the truth of what i tell shall see and if there dwell hard by one skilled to read from bird notes augury that man when through his ears shall thrill our tearful wail shall deem he hears the voice the plaintive tale of her the piteous spouse of Tereus, lord of guile whom the hawk harries yet the morning nightingale she from her happy home and fair streams scared away wails wild and sad for haunts beloved erewhile yea and for etylus ah well a day slain by her own his mother's hand maddened by lustful wrong the deed by tereus planned like her i wail and wail in soft ionian tones and as she wastes even so wastes my soft cheek once ripe with nilus sons and all my heart dissolves in utter woe sad flowers of grief i cull fleeing from kinsmen's love unmerciful yea from the clutching hands the lustful crowd i sped across the waves from egypt's land of cloud gods of the birthplace of my race hear me just gods with righteous grace on me on me look down grant not to youth its heart's unchaste desire but swiftly spurning lust's unholy fire bless only love and willing wedlock's crown the war-worn flyers from the battle's rack find refuge at the hallowed altar side the sanctuary divine ye gods such refuge unto me provide such sanctuary be mine though the deep will of zeus be hard to track yet doth it flame and glance a beacon in the dark mid clouds of chance that wrap mankind yea though the council fall undone it shall not lie whate'er be shaped and fixed within zeus ruling mind dark as a solemn grove with sombre leafage shaded his paths of purpose wind a marvel to man's eyes smitten by him from towering hopes degraded mortals lie low and still tireless and effortless works forth its will the arm divine god from his holy seat in calm of unarmed power brings forth the deed at its appointed hour let him look down on mortal wantonness 
lo how the youthful stock of bellus line craves for me uncontrolled with lust and madness bold urged on by passion's shunless stress and cheated learns too late the prey has scaped their hold ah listen listen to my grievous tale my sorrow's words my shrill and tearful cries ah woe ah woe loud with lament the accents rise and from my living lips my own sad dirges flow o apian land of hill and dale thou kennest yet o land this faltered foreign wail have mercy hear my prayer lo how again again i rend and tear my woven raiment and from off my hair cast the sidonian veil ah but if fortune smile if death be driven away vowed rites with eager haste we to the gods will pay alas alas again o whither drift the waves and who shall loose the pain o apian land of hill and dale thou kennest yet o land this faltered foreign wail have mercy hear my prayer lo how again again i rend and tear my woven raiment and from off my hair cast the sidonian veil the wafting oar the bark with woven sail from which the sea foamed back sped me unharmed of storms along the breeze's track be it unblamed of me but ah the end the end of my emprise may he the father with all-seeing eyes grant me that end to see grant that henceforth unstained as heretofore i may escape the forced embrace of those proud children of the race that sacred io bore and thou o maiden goddess chaste and pure queen of the inner fane look of thy grace on me o artemis thy willing suppliant thine thine it is who from the lustful onslaught fled secure to grant that i too without stain the shelter of thy purity may gain grant that henceforth unstained as heretofore i may escape the forced embrace of those proud children of the race that sacred io bore yet if this may not be we the dark race sun smitten we will speed with suppliant wands to zeus who rules below with hospitable hands who welcomes all the dead from all the lands yea by our own hands strangled we will go spurned by olympian gods unto the gods below zeus hear and save the searching poisonous hate that io vexed and drave was of a goddess well i know the bitter ire the wrathful woe of hera queen of heaven a storm a storm her breath whereby we yet are driven bethink thee what dispraise of zeus himself mankind will raise if now he turn his face averted from our cries if now dishonoured and alone the ox-horn maiden's race shall be undone children of epaphus his own begotten son zeus listen from on high to thee our prayers arise zeus hear and save the searching poisonous hate that io vexed and drave was of a goddess well i know the bitter ire the wrathful woe of hera queen of heaven a storm a storm her breath whereby we yet are driven danaos children be wary wary he with whom ye come your trusty sire and steersman old and that same caution hold i here on land and bid you hoard my words inscribing them on memory's tablets lo i see a far dust voiceless herald of a host arise and hark within their griding sockets ring axles of hurrying wheels i see approach borne in curved cars by speeding horses drawn a speared and shielded band the chiefs perchance of this their land are hitherward intent to look on us of whom they yet have heard by messengers alone but come who may and come he peaceful or in ravening wrath spurred on his path twere best in any case damsels to cling unto this altar mound made sacred to their gods of festival a shrine is stronger than a tower to save a shield that none may cleave step swift thereto and in your left hands hold with reverence the white crowned wands of suppliants the sign beloved of zeus compassion's lord and speak to those that question you words meek and low and piteous as beseems your stranger state 
clearly avowing of this flight of yours the bloodless cause and on your utterance see to it well that modesty attend from downcast eyes from brows of pure control let chastity look forth nor when ye speak be voluble nor eager they that dwell within this land are sternly swift to chide and be your words submissive heed this well for weak ye are outcasts on stranger lands and froward talk beseems not strengthless hands chorus o father warily to us aware thy words are spoken and thy wisdom's hest my mind shall hoard with zeus our sire to aid the nows even so with gracious aspect let him aid chorus fain were i now to seat me by thy side the nows now dally not but put our thought in act chorus zeus pity our distress or ere we die the nows if so he will your toils to joy will turn chorus lo on this shrine the semblance of a bird the nows zeus bird of dawn it is invoke the sign chorus thus i invoke the saving rays of morn the nows next bright apollo exiled once from heaven chorus the exiled god will pity our exile the nows yea may he pity giving grace and aid chorus whom next invoke i of these other gods the nows lo here a trident symbol of a god chorus who gave sea safety may he bless on land the nows this next is hermes carved in grecian wise chorus then let him herald help to freedom one the nows lastly adore this altar consecrate to many lesser gods in one then crouch on holy ground a flock of doves that flee scared by no alien hawks a kin not kind hateful and fain of love more hateful still foul is the bird that rends another bird and foul the men who hail unwilling maids from sire unwilling to the bridal bed never on earth nor in the lower world shall lewdness such as theirs escape the ban there too if men say right a god there is who upon dead men turns their sin to doom to final doom take heed draw hitherward that from this hap your safety ye may win enter the king of argos the king of argos speak of what land are ye no grecian band is this to whom i speak with eastern robes and wrappings richly dight no argive maid no woman in all greece such garb doth wear this too gives marvel how unto this land unheralded unfriended without guide and without fear ye came yet wands i see true sign of suppliants by you laid down on shrines of these our gods of festival no land but greece can read such signs aright much else there is conjecture well might guess but let words teach the man who stands to hear chorus true is the word thou spakest of my garb but speak i unto thee as citizen or hermes wand-bearer or chieftain king the king of argos for that take heart and answer without fear i am pelasgus ruler of this land child of polycthon whom the earth brought forth and rightly named from me the race who reap this country's harvests are pelasgian called and o'er the wide and westward stretching land where through the lucent wave of strymon flows i rule perhebia's land my boundary is northward and pindus further slopes that watch paeonia and dodona's mountain ridge west east the limit of the washing seas restrains my rule the interspace is mine but this whereon we stand is apian land styled so of old from the great healer's name for apis coming from now Pactus shore beyond the strait child of apollo's self and like him seer and healer cleanse this land from man devouring monsters whom the earth stained with pollution of old blood shedding brought forth in malice beasts of ravening jaws a grisly throng of serpents manifold and healings of their hurt by knife and charm apis devised unblamed of argive men and in their prayers found honour for reward lo thou hast heard the tokens that i give speak forth thy race and tell a forthright tale in sooth this people loves not many words chorus short is my word and clear 
of argive race we come from her the ox-horn maiden who erst bare the sacred child my word shall give what e'er can establish this my soothfast tale the king of argos o stranger maids i may not trust this word that ye have share in this our argive race no likeness of our country do ye bear but semblance as of libyan womankind even such a stock by nihilus banks might grow and like to you the moulds the handicraft of men made like unto a woman's shape in cyprus born of roving indian maids whose camping grounds by ethiopia lie and camels burden even as mules and bearing riders as horses bear mine ears have heard and tales of flesh devouring mateless maids called amazons to these if bows ye bear i most had deemed ye like speak further yet that of your argive birth the truth i learn chorus here in this argive land so runs the tale io was priestess once of hera's fane the king of argos yea truth it is and far this word prevails is said that zeus with mortal mingled love chorus ay and that hera that embraced surmised the king of argos how issued then this strife of those on high chorus by hera's will a heifer she became the king of argos held zeus aloof then from the horned beast chorus tis said he loved in semblance of a bull the king of argos and his stern consort did she aught thereon chorus one myriad eyed she set the heifer's guard the king of argos how namest thus this herdsman many-eyed chorus argus the child of earth whom hermes slew the king of argos still did the goddess vex the beast ill-starred chorus she wrought a gadfly with a goading sting the king of argos thus drave she io hence to roam afar chorus yea this thy word coheres exact with mine the king of argos then to canopus and to memphis came she chorus and by zeus hand was touched and bare a child the king of argos who vaunts him the zeus mated heifer's son chorus epaphus named rightly from the saving touch the king of argos and whom in turn did epaphus begat chorus libya with name of a wide land endowed the king of argos and who from her was born unto the race chorus belus from him two sons my father one the king of argos speak now to me his name this greybeard wise chorus danaus his brother fifty sons begat the king of argos grudge not in telling his name too to tell chorus aegyptus thou my lineage old hast heard strive then to aid a kindred argive band the king of argos yea of a truth in backward scope of time of argive race ye seem but say what chance fell on you goading you from home and land chorus lord of pelasgian men calamity is manifold and diverse as of birds feather from feather differs so of men the woes are sundry who had dared foretell this sudden flight this thrill of hate and fear of loathly wedlock would on argos shore set forth a race of kindred lineage the king of argos but say what cravest thou with olive shoots new plucked white filleted upon our shrines chorus ne'er to be slaves unto egyptus race the king of argos doth your own hate or doth the law forbid chorus not as our lords but as unloved we chide them the king of argos tis from such wedlock that advancement comes chorus how easy is it from the weak to turn the king of argos say then what heaven commands me toward you chorus deny us though aegyptus race demand the king of argos a heavy task thou namest a rash war chorus but just as champions them who strike for her the king of argos yea if their side was from the outset hers chorus revere the gods thus crowned who steer the state the king of argos awe oh, thrills me seeing these shrines with leafage crowned chorus yea stern the wrath of zeus the suppliant's lord 
child of polycthon royal chief of thy pelasgians here bow down thine heart to my relief a fugitive a suppliant swift with fear a heifer whom the wild wolves chase o'er toppling crags in piteous case aloud afar she lows calling the herdsman's trusty arm to save her from her foes the king of argos lo with bound heads beside our city shrines ye sit neath shade of new-plucked olive boughs our distant kin's resentment heaven forfend let not this hap unhoped and unforeseen bring war on us for strife we covet not chorus justice the daughter of right-dealing zeus justice the queen of suppliants look down that this our plight no ill may loose upon your town this word even from the young let age and wisdom learn if thou to suppliants show grace thou shalt not lack heaven's grace in turn so long as virtue's gifts on heavenly shrines have place the king of argos tis not my hearth where ye sit suppliant and if the city bear a common stain be it the common toil to cleanse the same therefore no pledge no promise will i give ere counsel with the commonwealth be held chorus nay but the source of sway the city's self art thou a power unjudged thine only thine to rule the right of hearth and shrine before thy throne and sceptre all men bow above all causes lord beware the curse divine the king of argos may that curse fall upon mine enemies i cannot aid you without risk of scathe nor scorn your prayers unmerciful it were perplexed distraught i stand and fear alike the twofold chance to do or not to do chorus have heed of him who looketh from on high the guard of woeful mortals whosoe'er unto their fellows cry and find no pity find no justice there abiding in his wrath the suppliant's lord doth smite unmoved by cries unbent by prayerful word the king of argos but if aegyptos children grasp you here claiming their country's right to hold you theirs as next of kin who dares to counter this plead ye your country's laws if plead ye may that upon you they lay no lawful hand chorus let me not fall o oh, never more a prey into the young men's hand rather than wed whom i abhor by pilot stars i flee this land o king take justice to thy side and with the righteous powers decide the king of argos hard is the cause make me not judge thereof already i have vowed it to do naught save after counsel with my people tain king though i be that ne'er in after time if ill fate chance my people then may say in aid of strangers thou the state hast slain chorus zeus lord of kinship rules at will the swaying balance and surveys evil and good to men of ill gives evil and to good men praise and thou since true those scales do sway shalt thou from justice shrink away the king of argos a deep a saving counsel hear their needs and i that like a diver to the depth of dark perplexity can pass and see undizzied unconfused first must we care that to the state and to ourselves this thing shall bring no ruin next that wrangling hands shall grasp you not as prey nor we ourselves betray you thus embracing sacred shrines and make the avenging all-destroying god who even in hell doth wreak him on the dead a grievous inmate an abiding bane spake i aright of saving counsel's need chorus yea counsel take and stand to aid at justice side and mine betray not me the timorous maid whom far beyond the brine a godless violence cast forth forlorn o king wilt thou behold lord of this land wilt thou behold me torn from altars manifold bethink thee of the young men's wrath and lust hold off their evil pride steal not thyself to see the suppliant thrust from holy statue's side hailed by the frontlet on my forehead bound as steeds are led and drawn by hands that drag from shrine and altar mound my vesture's fringed lawn know thou that whether for aegyptus race thou dost their wish fulfil or for the gods and for each holy place be thy choice good or ill blow is with blow requited grace with grace such is zeus's righteous will 
the king of argos yea i have pondered from the sea of doubt there drives at length the bark of thought ashore landward with screw and windless hailed and firm clamped to her prop she lies the need is stern with men or gods a mighty strife we strive perforce and either hap and grief concludes for if a house be sacked new wealth for old not hard it is to win so zeus the lord of treasure favour more than quits the loss enough to pile the store of wealth full high or if a tongue shoot forth untimely speech bitter and strong to goad a man to wrath soft words there be to soothe that wrath away but what device shall make the war of kin bloodless that woe the blood of many beasts and victims manifold to many gods alone can cure right glad i were to shun this strife and am more fain of ignorance than of the wisdom of a woe endured the gods send better than my soul foretells chorus of many cries for mercy hear the end the king of argos say on then for it shall not scape mine ear chorus girdles we have and bands that bind our robes the king of argos even so such things beseem a woman's wear chorus know then with these a fair device there is the king of argos speak then what utterance doth this foretell chorus unless to us thou givest pledge secure the king of argos what can thy girdle's craft achieve for thee chorus strange votive tablets shall these statues deck the king of argos mysterious thy resolve avow it clear chorus swiftly to hang me on these sculptured gods the king of argos thy word is as a lash to urge my heart chorus thou seest truth for i have cleared thine eyes the king of argos yea and woes manifold invincible a crowd of ills sweep on me torrent-like my bark goes forth upon a sea of troubles unfathomed ill to traverse harbourless for if my deed shall match not your demand dire beyond shot of speech shall be the bane your death's pollution leaves into this land yet if against your kin aegyptos race before our gates i front the doom of war will not the city's loss be sore shall men for women's sake incarnadine the ground but yet the wrath of zeus the suppliant's lord i needs must fear most awful unto man the terror of his anger thou old man the father of these maidens gather up within your arms these wands of suppliants and lay them at the altars manifold of all our country's gods that all the town know by this sign you're coming hitherward nor in thy haste do thou say aught of me swift is this folk to censure those who rule but if they see these signs of suppliants it well may chance that each will pity you and loathe the young men's violent pursuit and thus a fairer favour ye may find for to the helpless each man's heart is kind the nows beyond gifts manifold to us is this to find a champion thus compassionate yet send with me attendants of thy folk rightly to guide me that i duly find each altar of your city's gods that stands before the fane each dedicated shrine and that in safety through the city's ways i may pass onwards all unlike to yours the outward semblance that i wear the race that nilus rears is all dissimilar to that of inachus keep watch and ward lest heedlessness bring death full oft i ween friend hath slain friend not knowing whom he slew the king of argos go at his side attendants he saith well on to the city's consecrated shrines nor be of many words to those ye meet the while this suppliant voyager ye lead exit danaus with attendants chorus let him go forward thy command obeying but me how biddest how assurest thou the king of argos leave there the new plucked boughs thy sorrow's sign chorus thus beckoned forth at thy behest i leave them the king of argos now to this level precinct turn thyself chorus unconsecrate it is and cannot shield me the king of argos we will not yield thee to those falcons greed chorus what help more fierce they are than serpents fell the king of argos we spake thee fair speak thou them fair in turn chorus 
what marvel that we loathe them scared in soul the king of argos but terror never can become a king chorus thus speak thus act and reassure my mind the king of argos not long thy sire shall leave thee desolate but i will call the country's indwellers and with soft words the assembly will persuade and warn your sire what pleadings will avail therefore abide ye and with prayer entreat the country's gods to compass your desire the while i go this matter to provide persuasion and fair fortune at my side exit the king of argos end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine Two of the Suppliant Maidens by Aeschylus, translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Morshead. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two. Chorus, O King of Kings, among the blessed, thou highest and thou happiest, listen and grant our prayer, and deeply loathing, thrust away from us the young men's lust and deeply drown in azure waters down and ever down benches and rowers dark the fatal and perfidious bark unto the maidens turn thy gracious care think yet again upon the tale of fame how from the maiden loved of thee there sprung mine ancient line long since in many a legend sung remember o oh remember thou whose hand did eo by a touch to human shape reclaim for from this argos erst our mother came and then in egypt's land the god possessed we dwelt and thence our birth we claim and now have i roamed back unto the ancient track where eo roamed and pastured among flowers watched o'er by argus eyes through the lush grasses and the meadow bowers thence by the gadfly maddened forth she flies unto far lands and alien peoples driven and following fate through paths of foam and surge sees as she goes the cleaving straight divide greece from the eastland riven and swift through asian borders doth she urge her course o'er phrygian mountain sheep clipped side thence where the mesian realm of teuthras lies towards lydian lowlands highs and o'er cilician and pamphylian hills and ever flowing rills and thence to aphrodite's fertile shore the land of garnered wheat and wealthy store and thence deep stung by wild unrest by the winged fly that goaded her and drave unto the fertile land the god possessed where fed from far-off snows life-giving nilus flows urged on by typhus strength a fertilizing wave she roves in harassed and dishonored flight scathed by the blasting pangs of hera's dread despite and they within the land with terror shook and wand so strange the sight they saw and were afraid a wild twy natured thing half heifer and half maid whose hand was laid at last on io thus forlorn with many roamings worn who bade the harassed maiden's peace return zeus lord of time etern yea by his breath divine by his unscathing strength she lays aside her bane and softened back to womanhood at length sheds human tears again then quickened with zeus's veritable seed a progeny she bare a stainless babe a child of heavenly breed of life and fortune fair his is the life of life so all men say his is the seed of zeus who else had power stern hera's craft to stay her vengeful curse to loose yea all from zeus befell and rightly wouldst thou tell that we from epaphus his child were born justly his deed was done unto what other one of all the gods should i for justice turn from him our race did spring creator he and king ancient of days and wisdom he and might as bark before the wind so wafted by his mind moves every counsel every device aright beneath no stronger hand holds he a weak command no throne doth he abase him to adore swift as a word his deed acts out what stands decreed in counsels of his heart for evermore re-enter danaus danaus 
take heart my children the land's heart is kind and to full issue has their voting come chorus all hail my sire thy word brings utmost joy say to what issue is the vote made sure and how prevailed the people's crowding hands danaus with one assent the argives spake their will and hearing my old heart took youthful cheer the very sky was thrilled when high in air the concourse raised right hands and swore their oath free shall the maidens sojourn in this land unharried undespoiled by mortal wight no native hand no hand of foreigner shall drag them hence if any man use force who e'er of all our countrymen shall fail to come unto their aid let him go forth beneath the people's curse to banishment so did their king persuade them such the plea he spake concerning us and warnings gave that zeus the suppliant's lord in wrath and might would never in the aftertime make fat the city with prosperity a curse twofold for strangers and for kinsfolk scorned should rise against the city and become an unescaped and ravening fang of woe such things the argive people heard and straight without proclaim of herald gave assent yea in full conclave the pelasgian folk heard suasive pleas and zeus through them resolved chorus arouse we now to chant our prayer for fair return of service fair and argos kindly will zeus lord of guest right look upon the grace our stranger lips have won in right and truth as they begun guide them with favouring hand until thou dost their blameless wish fulfil now may the zeus-born gods on high hear us pour forth a votive prayer for argos clan never may this pelasgian earth amid the fire-rack shrill the dismal cry on ares ravening lord of fight who in a cursed harvest mows down man for lo this land had pity on our plight and unto us were merciful and leal to us the piteous flock who at zeus altar kneel they scorn not the pleas of maidenhood nor with the young men's will hath their will stood they knew right well the unearthly watching fiend invincible the foul avenger let him not draw near for he on roofs ill starred defiling and polluting keeps a ghastly ward they knew his vengeance and took holy heed to us the sister suppliants who cry to zeus the lord of purity therefore with altars pure they shall the gods revere thus through the boughs that shade our lips fly forth in air fly forth o eager prayer may never pestilence efface this city's race nor be the land with corpses strewed nor stained with civic blood the stem of youth unplucked to manhood come nor ares rise from aphrodite's bower the lord of death and bane to waste our youthful flower long may the old crowd to the altars kindled to consume gifts rich and manifold offered to win from powers divine a benison on city and on shrine let all the sacred might adore of zeus most high the lord of guest right and the hospitable board whose immemorial law doth rule fate scales aright the garners of earth's store be full for evermore and grace of artemis make women's travail light no devastating curse of fell disease this city sees no clamour of the state aroused to war ares from whom afar shrinketh the lute by whom the dances fail ares the lord of wail swarm far aloof from argos citizens all plague and pestilence and may the archer god our children spare may zeus with foison and with fruitfulness the lands each season bless and quickened with heaven's bounty manifold teem grazing flock and fold beside the altars of heaven's hallowing loud let the minstrels sing and from pure lips float forth the harp-led strain in air and let the people's voice the power that sways the state in danger's hour be wary wise for all nor honour in dishonour hold but ere the voice of war be bold let them to stranger peoples grant fair and unbloody covenant justice and peace with all and to the argive powers divine the sacrifice of laurelled kind by right ancestral pay among three words of power and awe 
stands this the third the mighty law your gods your fathers deified ye shall adore let this abide for ever and for a danaus dear children well and wisely have ye prayed i bid you now not shudder though ye hear new and unlooked for tidings from your sire from this high place beside the suppliant's shrine the bark of our pursuers i behold by diverse tokens recognized too well lo the spread canvas and the hides that screen the gunwale lo the prow with painted eyes that seem her onward pathway to descry heeding too well the rudder at the stern that rules her coming for no friendly end and look the seamen all too plain their race their dark limbs gleam from out their snow-white garb plain to the other barks a fleet that comes all swift to aid the purpose of the first that now with furled sail and with pulse of oars which smite the wave together shoots a land but ye be calm and schooled not scared by fear confront this chance be mindful of your trust in these protecting gods and i will hence and champions who shall plead your cause aright will bring unto your side there come perchance heralds or envoys eager to lay hand and drag you captive hence yet fear them not foiled shall they be yet well it were for you if ere with aid i come i tarry long not by one step this sanctuary to leave farewell fear naught soon shall the hour be born when he that scorns the gods shall rue his scorn chorus ah but i shudder father ah even now even as i speak the swift-winged ships draw nigh i shudder i shiver i perish with fear overseas though i fled yet naught it avails my pursuers are near danaus children take heart they who decreed to aid thy cause will arm for battle well i ween chorus but desperate is thy gyptus ravening race with fight unsated thou too knowest it well in their wrath they o'ertake us the prow is deep dark in the which they have sped and dark is the bench and the crew of the bark danaus yea but a crew as stout they here shall find in arms well steeled beneath the noonday sun chorus ah yet o oh father leave us not forlorn alone a maid is not a strengthless arm with guile they pursue me with counsel malign and unholy their soul and as ravens they seize me unheeding the shrine danaus fair will befall us children in this chance if thus in wrath they wrong the gods and you chorus alas nor tridents nor the sanctity of shrines will drive them o my sire from us unholy and daring and cursed is their ire nor own they control of the gods but like jackals they glut their desire danaus ay but come wolf flee jackal saith the saw nor can the flax plant overbear the corn chorus lustful accursed monstrous is their will as of beasts ravening where we of their power danaus look you not swiftly puts a fleet to sea nor swiftly to its moorings long it is or ere the saving cables to the shore are borne and long or ere the steersmen cry the good ship swings at anchor all is well longest of all the task to come a land where haven there is none when sunset fades in night to pilot wise the adage saith night is a day of wakefulness and pain therefore no force of weaponed men as yet scatheless can come ashore before the bark lie at her anchorage securely moored bethink thee therefore nor in panic leave the shrine of gods whose succour thou hast won i seek the town men shall not blame me long old but with youth at heart and on my tongue exit danaus chorus o land of hill and dale o holy land what shall befall us whither shall we flee from apian land to some dark lair of earth o would that in vapour of smoke i might rise to the clouds of the sky that as dust which flits up without wings i might pass and vanish and die i dare not i dare not abide my heart yearns eager to fly and dark is the cast of my thought i shudder and tremble for fear my father looked forth and beheld 
i die of the sight that draws near and for me be the strangling cord the halter made ready by fate before to my body draws nigh the man of my horror and hate nay ere i will own him as lord as handmaid to hades i go and oh that aloft in the sky where the dark clouds are frozen to snow a refuge for me might be found or a mountain-top smooth and too high for the foot of the goat where the vulture sits lonely and none may descry the pinnacle veiled in the cloud the highest and sheerest of all heir to wedlock that rendeth my heart and love that is love less i fall yea a prey to the dogs and the birds of the mount will i give me to be from wailing and curse and pollution it is death only death sets me free let death come upon me before to the ravisher's bed i am thrust what champion what saviour but death can i find or what refuge from lust i will utter my shriek of entreaty a prayer that shrills up to the sky that calleth the gods to compassion a tuneful a pitiful cry that is loud to invoke the releaser o oh, father look down on the fight look down in thy wrath on the wronger with eyes that are eager for right zeus thou that art lord of the world whose kingdom is strong over all have mercy on us at thine altar for refuge and safety we call for the race of aegyptus is fierce with lust and with malice afire they cry as the questing hounds they sweep with the speed of desire but thine is the balance of fate thou rulest the wavering scale and without thee no mortal emprise shall have strength to achieve or prevail alack alack the ravisher he leaps from boat to beach he draweth near away thou plunderer accursed death seize thee first or ere thou touch me off god hear our cry our maiden agony ah ah the touch the prelude of my shame alas my maiden fame o sister sister to the altar cling for he that seizeth me grim is his wrath and stern by land as on the sea guard us o king enter the herald of aegyptus herald of aegyptus hence to my barge step swiftly tarry not chorus alack he rends he rends my hair o wound on wound help my lopped head will fall my blood gush o'er the ground herald of aegyptus aboard ye cursed with a new curse go chorus would god that on the wandering brine thou and this braggart tongue of thine had sunk beneath the main thy mast and planks made fast in vain thee would i drive aboard once more a slayer and a dastard from the shore herald of aegyptus be still thou vain demented soul my force thy craving shall control away aboard what clingest to the shrine away the city's gods i hold not for divine chorus aid me ye gods that never never i may again behold the mighty the life-giving river nihilus the quickener of field and fold alack o sire unto the shrine i cling shrine of this land from which mine ancient line did spring herald of aegyptus shrines shrines forsooth the ship the ship be shrine aboard perforce and will ye nil ye go or ere from hands of mine ye suffer torments worse and blow on blow chorus alack god grant those hands may strive in vain with the salt streaming wave when gainst the wide-blown blast thy bark shall strain to round sarpedon's cape the sandbank's treacherous grave herald of aegyptus shrill ye and shriek unto what gods ye may ye shall not leap from out aegyptus bark how bitterly soe'er ye wail your woe chorus alack alack my wrong stern is thy voice thy vaunting loud and strong thy sire the mighty nihilus drive thee hence turning to death and doom thy lustful violence herald of aegyptus swift to the vessel of the double prow go quickly let none linger else this hand ruthless will hail you by your tresses hence chorus alack o father from the shrine not aid but agony is mine as a spider he creeps and he clutches his prey and he hales me away 
a spectre of darkness of darkness alas and alas well a day o oh, earth o oh, my mother o oh, zeus thou king of the earth and her child turn back we pray thee from us his clamour and threatenings wild herald of aegyptus peace i fear not this country's deities they fostered not my childhood nor mine age chorus like a snake that is human he comes he shudders and crawls to my side as an adder that biteth the foot his clutch on my flesh doth abide o earth o my mother o zeus thou king of the earth and her child turn back we pray thee from us his clamour and threatenings wild herald of aegyptus swift each unto the ship repine no more or my hand shall not spare to rend your robe chorus o chiefs o leaders aid me or i yield herald of aegyptus speak peace if ye have not ears to hear my words lo by these tresses must i hail you hence chorus o ruin o despair bring aid o king herald of aegyptus ay kings and now ye shall behold anon aegyptus sons ye shall not want for kings enter the king of argos the king of argos sirrah what dost thou how art overbold thus daring to insult pelasgia's realm what deemst thou this a woman-hearted town too full thou art of thy barbarian scorn for us of grecian blood go to dost dare deluded thus to work these diverse wrongs herald of aegyptus say thou wherein my deeds transgress my right the king of argos first that thou playest a stranger's part amiss herald of aegyptus wherein i do but search and claim mine own the king of argos to whom of our guest champions hast appealed herald of aegyptus to hermes herald's champion lord of search the king of argos unto a god yet dost thou wrong the gods herald of aegyptus the gods that rule by nilus i revere the king of argos i take thy word our argive gods are not herald of aegyptus the prey is mine unless force rend it from me the king of argos at thine own peril touch them where and soon herald of aegyptus i hear thy speech no hospitable word the king of argos i am no host for sacrilegious hands herald of aegyptus this greeting will i to my masters tell the king of argos tell and thou wilt i ponder not thy will herald of aegyptus yet that i have my message clear to say for it behooves that herald's words be clear be they or ill or good how art thou named by whom despoil it of this sister band of maidens i pass homeward speak and say for lo henceforth in ares court we stand who judges not by witness but by war no pledge of silver now can bring the cause to issue ere this thing end there must be corpse piled on corpse and many lives gasped forth the king of argos what skills it that i tell my name to thee thou and thy mates shall learn it ere the end know that if words unstained by violence can change these maidens choice then mayest thou with full consent of theirs conduct them hence but thus the city with one voice ordained no force shall bear away the maiden band firmly this word upon the temple wall is by a rivet clenched and shall abide not upon wax inscribed indelible nor upon parchment sealed and stored away lo thou hast heard our free mouth speak their will out from our presence tarry not but go herald of aegyptus have then thy will that new war come on thee strength and success be on the young men's side the king of argos know that here also ye shall find young men unsodden with the juices oozed from corn exit herald of aegyptus but ye o maids with your attendants true pass hence with trust into the fenced town ringed with a wide confine of guarding towers therein are many dwellings for such guests as the state honours there myself am housed within a palace neither scant nor straight there dwell ye if ye will to lodge at ease in halls well thronged yet if your soul prefer dwell ye secluded in a separate home choose ye in cull 
from these our proffered gifts whichever is best and sweetest to your will and i and all these citizens whose vote stands thus decreed will your protectors be look not to find elsewhere more loyal guard chorus o godlike chief god grant my prayer fair blessings on thy proffers fair lord of pelasgia's race yet of thy grace unto our side send thou the man of courage tried of counsel deep and prudent thought be danaus to his children brought for his it is to guide us well and warn where it behooves to dwell what place shall guard and shelter us from malice and tongue slanderous swift always are the lips of blame a stranger maiden to defame but fortune give us grace the king of argos a stainless fame a welcome kind from all this people shall ye find dwell therefore damsels loved of us within our walls as danaus allots to each in order due her dower of attendance true re-enter danaus danaus high thanks my children unto argos khan and to this folk as to olympian gods give offerings meet of sacrifice and wine for saviours are they in good sooth to you from me they heard and bitter was their wrath how those your kinsmen strove to work you wrong and how of us were thwarted then to me this company of spearmen did they grant that honoured i might walk nor unaware die by some secret thrust and on this land bring down the curse of death that dieth not such boons they gave me it behooves me pay a deeper reverence from a soul sincere ye to the many words of weariness spoken by me your father add this word that tried by time our unknown company be held for honest over swift are tongues to slander strangers over light is speech to bring pollution on a stranger's name therefore i read you bring no shame on me now when man's eye beholds your maiden prime lovely is beauty's ripening harvest field but ill to guard and men and beasts i wot and birds and creeping things make prey of it and when the fruit is ripe for love the voice of aphrodite broodeth it abroad the while she guards a yet unripened growth on the fair richness of a maiden's bloom each passer looks o'ercome with strong desire with eyes that waft the wistful dart of love then be not such our hap whose livelong toil did make our pinnace plough the mighty main nor bring we shame upon ourselves and joy unto my foes behold a twofold home one of the kings and one the people's gift unbought tis yours to hold a gracious boon go but remember ye your sire's behest and hold your life less dear than chastity chorus the gods above grant that all else be well but fear not thou o sire lest aught befall of ill unto our ripened maidenhood so long as heaven have no new ill devised from its chaste path my spirit shall not swerve semi-chorus pass and adore ye the blessed the gods of the city who dwell around erasinus the gush of the swift immemorial tide semi-chorus chant ye o maidens aloud let the praise of pelasgia swell him we no longer the shores where nilus to ocean doth glide semi-chorus sing we the bounteous streams that ripple and gush through the city quickening flow they and fertile the soft new life of the plain semi-chorus artemis maiden most pure look on us with grace and with pity save us from forced embraces such love hath no crown but a pain semi-chorus yet not in scorn we chant but in honour of aphrodite she truly and hera alone have power with zeus and control holy the deeds of her right her craft is secret and mighty and high is her honour on earth and subtle her sway of the soul semi-chorus yea and her child is desire in the train of his mother he goeth yea and persuasion soft-lipped whom none can deny or repel cometh harmonia too on whom aphrodite bestoweth the whispering parley the paths of the rapture that lovers love well semi-chorus ah but i tremble and quake lest again they should sail to reclaim alas for the sorrow to come the blood and the carnage of war ah but whose will was it done that o'er the wide ocean they came 
guided by favouring winds and wafted by sail and by oar semi chorus peace for what fate hath ordained will surely not tarry but come wide is the counsel of zeus by no man escaped or withstood only i pray that whate'er in the end of this wedlock he doom we as many a maiden of old may win from the ill to the good semi chorus great zeus this wedlock turn from me me from the kinsman bridegroom guard semi chorus come what come may tis fate's decree semi chorus soft is thy word the doom is hard semi chorus thou know'st not what the fates provide semi chorus how should i scan zeus mighty will the depth of counsel undescried semi chorus pray thou no word of omen ill semi chorus what timely warning wouldst thou teach semi chorus beware nor slight the gods in speech semi chorus zeus hold from my body the wedlock detested the bridegroom abhorred it was thou it was thou didst release mine ancestress io from sorrow thine healing it was that restored the touch of thine hand gave her peace semi chorus be thy will for the cause of the maidens of two ills for the least one i pray the exile that leaveth me pure may thy justice have heed to my cause my prayers to thy mercy find way for the hands of thy saving are sure exeunt omnes end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of the suppliant maidens by aeschylus translated by edmund doidge anderson moorshead